Amigos de 18 Minutos, bienvenidos a su programa. Soy Francisco Rodríguez Aguirre, presidente de Smart Speakers, y estoy con mi amigo Mauricio Reynoso. Encantado, encantado mi querido Pancho, y con un tema no de actualidades, ya del presente totalmente. Del presente y que cada vez tenemos que estar más metidos entendiendo qué está pasando para pues, poder estar al frente de nuestras empresas. Bueno, pues voy a, a presentarles a nuestro invitado de, del día de hoy, que él es Zach Kass. Es un experto en inteligencia artificial. Él fue Head of Go to Market de OpenAI, la empresa que, desarrolladora del chat GPT. Es un conferencista y un consultor. Uh, Zach, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Zach, how did you get started into inter uh, artificial intelligence? I got pretty lucky. I joined a machine learning company in early, early uh, data science days, so about 2010, that was doing data labeling. So they were early search scientists who had figured out that you could use humans at scale to uh, improve search results by humans ranking those results. I took that job in 2010. I had no idea at the time the velocity that uh, AI would would soon improve uh, at, and then went uh, to a large language model company building um, neural nets for the purposes of translation, and then eventually to OpenAI. Zach, I wonder, uh... From your pers perspective, what will be the scope of AI, in particular in our lives, impacting businesses, etc.? Which will be the main challenges and limitations you foresee to understand really what's the uh, the scope of, of AI in our current lives and day by day uh, routines? Yeah, so I think. Uh... I, will, I won't bury the lead. I basically think that the most important technology that humans may ever invent is artificial general intelligence, right? The, the, the sort of holy grail of AI is this theory of AI that is capable of any intellectual human task and capable of helping itself invent novel scientific developments. So in theory, AI could be the last technology that humans invent and henceforth all technologies are actually invented by AI. Um, in that spirit, and I sort of, I, I subscribe to that, I think it's very likely that we see an incredible sort of exponential improvement in the human experience, uh, a reduction in suffering, um, an improvement in, in general happiness and joy as a result of the advancements in bioscience and life sciences, um, education, uh, general uh, practices like industry, manufacturing, foodstuffs. Ultimately, I think we're going to see a massive deflationary event in our lives where the cost of goods and services comes way, way down. And it just becomes a whole lot less expensive to live very comfortably and even richly uh, by, by today's standards. That's not really a hot take. Technology has done that sort of every time. New, new technologies have lowered the cost of goods and services. I just think this time it's going to happen pretty incredibly at a pretty incredible rate. Um, look, the challenges are going to be are going to be plentiful. I think we're going to need to overcome uh, a compute and energy deficit. We're going to run out of both of those things at the current rate. So we need to we need breakthroughs in compute and we need breakthroughs in in uh, energy and the amount of energy and how we store it. We definitely need um, to figure out how to policy this technology effectively. How do we pass regulation and enforce regulation that can uh, uh, safely manage AI development, but also not restrict AI development? Um, and I think we need to manage for the, the risks. And the big risk, I think, is an existentialism. I don't think that AI is going to kill us. I think it's very possible that AI makes us dumber, at least in the short term. If we solve all of the problems in day-to-day -day life, it's very possible that our brains sort of stop evolving for a little bit. And I think that's, again, a short-term problem, but I think it's something we'll, we'll have to figure out. Um, you know, Wally, the, the the famous Pixar film, sort of depicts this pretty well. What happens if you solve all your problems 
well, one outcome is you just sort of surrender to, you know, a, a very, a very uh, mindless life. Um, so that, that, that's, that's a long answer. And, and sort of my prediction for how AI will, will bend our lives in the near term, I think you can just expect to see a wave of incredible developments uh, as a result of AI being embedded into all of the, you know, existing infrastructure uh, day to day. I just want to emphasize something that you mentioned, and is uh, we are looking for regulations not to limit the development of the technology, but yes, uh, if I understood well, you really foresee something in terms of regulation, ethics, etc., about AI. Um, yeah, so I think basically AI needs to be regulated. Um, and I think we need to figure out how to regulate it effectively. The real risk, in my opinion here, is that we actually regulate the wrong things. So where we should be regulating things like alignment, we instead regulate things like ethics, um, who can use the technology and how can it be used. I think... Um, I think there is a risk in, in all policy that it is overreaching and overbearing. And we should be really, really mindful of passing policy that doesn't make it hard to develop um, this technology at scale or use this technology at scale for risks of just sort of policing it out of existence. Thank you, Zach. Uh, how can big companies take advantage of the AI in today's world? Um, I think that there are basically three things that big companies need to assume. The first is that AI is inevitable, that it is going to change how the world operates at sort of an incredible scale and they need to move quickly. And this is true for little companies too, but big companies in particular, or they will truly go by the wayside. The second thing they need to do once they've arrived at that conclusion is identify what are the things that they need to build for? What are the things that big companies need to themselves build for? And what can they buy from their vendors? I think there is a, um, uh, a, a trap that companies can fall into where they see a new technology and they assume that they should build all the things that come with it. In actuality, there are probably one or two things that every big company should invest aggressively in with respect to AI. And then they should go to all their technology vendors and put pressure on those companies to install AI into their technologies. Because it'll be very easy for big companies to go down lots of rabbit holes, building things like customer service platforms that are unique to them, when in fact, they should just go to their customer service technology provider and ask them for an AI-powered customer service technology. And Zach, uh, related to this, is not only AI is not only limited or exclusive of large companies, and it's, it is also something is widely applied for no matter the size of your company, mid-size, small size, or even schools, etc. Yeah, again, I think that the best, um, the best way to sort of explore AI is to adopt what technology exists today, which is which which there is plenty of. ChatGPT, principally among them, can do a lot of really interesting things and solve a lot of really hard problems for small businesses, medium businesses, students, schools, large companies. It is not hard to imagine um, how I, as a small business owner, have saved tons of hours every week by using these technologies. And I think that the risk that small businesses will fall into is that they say, well, we can't build things on our own. We don't have the resources that big companies have. Therefore, you know, we can't embrace AI. I think that's very wrong. And there's plenty of tools that exist today that can sort of accelerate accelerate business from a growth standpoint and lower, lower costs. Um, and as for schools, yeah, look, I think... I tend to believe that education and healthcare will be two of the major, as, as industries will be two of the major, uh, well, I shouldn't say industries, healthcare and education as practices 
will be two of the major beneficiaries. I think their industries will actually be shaken up quite a bit by this technology. I think that we will see a rise of AI powered tutors, personalized education systems for every individual that knows what they know and how they like to learn and can prescribe really, really interesting um, education plans to them. And of course, bio and life sciences, I think we're just gonna see an explosion of uh, medical breakthroughs in the next, in the next few years. Zach, what do business leaders need to do to take ad advantage, but as business leaders of for this AI thing? Yeah, I'll say it again. I think that business leaders need to assume that AI is inevitable. And I wouldn't, I don't think waiting on the sidelines is is a viable strategy. I think ultimately the hardest part about adopting AI is is again going to come down to figuring out what should you buy versus what should you build. But the simplest strategy today, in my opinion, is to um, explore the tools that exist on the market today, you know, in, in like in, in real ways. I think ChatGPT Enterprise and ChatGPT for Teams, Claude, et cetera, th these products, they offer an enormous amount of value to the individual who use them. And I don't think that AI serves as a, you know, silver bullet for anything today in business. But I can't imagine running my small business without these tools. And it's hard for me to imagine the amount of um, cruft, you know, the amount, the amount of stuff that exists in large companies that people are paid lots of money to do re repetitively. And so my advice to business leaders when I meet with them is go challenge your teams to start using the tools available to them to, today. Don't wait for your company to build something or for your vendors to build something special. There are a lot of things on the market today that exist that can add really, really tremendous value right away. And Zach, talking again about uh, scope, et cetera, do you foresee any boundaries for H H chat GPT? I mean, uh, something that could be exclusively for for a day by day basis routines or is something that we don't see yet how much uh, how how important can be in our daily basis yeah i i, I don't i think that we you know we're in the phase of enhanced applications today and i think chat gpt has sort of changed the world's understanding of how the, the this technology can work for us um yeah, I, I think that we, I think it's just going to continue to expand in scope of of uh, capability and quality, and eventually get to a point where you know we can we can give it a lot of the stuff that we do day to day that doesn't really accrue value or doesn't really inspire us. Um, and I think you know I think we've just begun that process. Zach, uh, Google has a Bart and, and Genesis. What are the difference with the chat GPT? You know, ultimately these models are all pretty similar. Like Gemini is proving, you know, G Gemini is proving to be pretty similar to GPT-4. Um, tests are, you know, comparable. Um, Anthropics Claude is proving pretty similar to, to GPT-3.5. There are open source models that are, you know, pretty similar to 3.5. So I think basically what we're seeing is that, you know, the 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 industry at large is sort of finding some parity, which is I think really important because it creates competition, it creates optionality, it also breeds more innovation, um, and it and it reduces the risk of sort of a technological hegemony, right, or 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 monopoly. Um, I don't know that like, I, you know, I, I'm, I can't say that I've, I've used the products, each individual product enough to tell you the major differences, but ultimately my advice to people is um, to explore these products, right? To explore Gemini and to explore Claude, um, to explore Bard and see how they, you know, see how they work. Um, they're, they're, all, they're all remarkably capable products. I really like what you mentioned earlier, Zach, related to ChatGPT should be helping us in a day-by-day -day activities. 
uh, helping us to really invest time and efforts on those activities that really add value. And I really yeah. like that, and I, I agree with that. Uh, do you foresee any new technologies that sh you, we should be aware of? Uh, well, do you mean within AI or uh -huh, within AI? AI? Yeah. So, I mean, the new, the, the, the things on the horizon that are really exciting are probably related to um, natural language processing. How well can these machines interpret our, you know, our natural language? And the reason for this is, is that we are building AI powered agents, LLM agents that will actually end up doing work on our behalf and the extent to which, you know, we could say something as simple as, you know, um, I need to, I need a flight to, I need a flight to Mexico city tomorrow. And the LLM powered agent can go do all that work for us. That's, that's really where this is headed in the not too distant future. And so I think you're going to see a rise in LLM powered agents as a technology and natural language processing, the ability for a machine to interpret what we're saying and what we actually mean. In addition, I think that we're going to see huge, huge improvements in computer vision and robotics. And there are going to be big breakthroughs probably in the next few years around what machines, physical machines are capable of doing, um, you know, with respect to AI. Zach, thank you very much for your time and for all your content. It's very practical. And Mauricio. Thank you very much, Zach. Gracias, Pancho. Fantastic content and things to reflect on. Great. Thank you both so much. Eh, amigos, si les gustó el contenido, por favor, compártanlo con sus amistades y denos like en YouTube y en Spotify. Gracias. Hasta luego.